The dream of having a Ready Player One style haptic suit for VR and especially PSVR 2 on a headset that's tied to a console has been just that for a while. A dream. But we got an announcement from AJ from PSVR Underground and Without Parole respectively. If you watch either of those channels, you'll have seen him before. Announcing that he is testing a couple games which support the haptics on PSVR 2. Now, does this mean we're going to take our immersion to the next level? Possibly, but it's dependent on budget, how far you want to go in terms of having your setup, and what games will actually support this thing. We've got a couple confirmed and then one unconfirmed that he spoke about, which either hasn't been released yet or announced yet, or the devs have just decided to not announce their be haptic suit support yet. So it could be either one of those. But before we get into it, I just want to say, I hate doing the whole YouTube spiel of like, please subscribe or whatever, but only 20% of you are actually subbed to the channel, which is kind of a crazy stat. So if you've ever considered subbing to the channel or would just like to show you support in any way, in a free way, it would help to get us to our goal of 10,000 subs by the end of the next couple months. That would be absolutely unreal. So anyway, on with what you actually care about, which is the video. B haptics have been around for a while. They're probably the main leaders in haptic suits for VR. I've never gotten to try one, but B haptics, if you'd like to send one over for me to kind of show off in a video, I would be not opposed to that whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> but they have a couple models essentially, and you can buy what fits your budget. So I think the higher up model is about what $600, $300 for the more budget model. So these are quite premium tech in terms of price point, but it is justified by the amount of tech that's packed into them because these haptic suits, I think on the lower end have about 40 different haptic points of feedback around them and they can connect in various ways. One of those ways is just by general audio to haptics. So I've seen those sort of suits before for flat screen games where you plug in an aux cable or you connect via Bluetooth and the audio from the game that you're playing, let's say Battlefield for example, will be transferred to the suit and you'll essentially, if an explosion goes off and that audio waveform is red, it'll be converted to an explosion you feel in the rumble. Now, that is one of the ways that you could use the Be Haptics device. Um, you could say jump into Gran Turismo 7, you'll feel the roar of the engines as they kick up and rev harder, and that'll be a direct just audio to haptic feedback. But the other way is through native support. And the first game that AJ said got support was Breaches. So native with a game like Breaches means that the devs have actually worked in combination with B Haptics uh, to actually support those nodes and those feedback points directly. So say if you get shot in the upper right shoulder, that feedback point might go off or for a certain uh, sound effect or certain event in game that'll trigger certain feedback. Uh, just like the haptics do in the headset and in the controllers, the controllers have various feedback points. Uh, say if you're shooting a gun in Pavlov, the whole controller will kick. But if you're paddling in the rain in Kayak VR, the feedback points around the controllers will simulate rain hitting them. It's a similar thing here. The different points can be used for different effects and it's up to the developer to kind of utilize those natively. So with breaches, you could be getting some really good feedback by blowing open doors and stuff like that. Um, but then we've also got games like Cube, the developer for Cube VR has said that Cube is going to get haptic support as well. Not a game that I'd really imagine using haptics, but it is cool that it's been added and I'm interested to see where that really goes uh, for Cube VR. But yeah, that is what native means. It means that it's essentially having precise accuracy in terms of direction and feedback of where the haptics are coming from. But also, of course, it means, as I said, if you just want to play a flat game or play any VR game or, say, watch a film, those haptics can be converted from an audio waveform to just general rumble in the suit, depending on the intensity and the type of waveform, basically. Now, the unannounced game that B Haptics is getting support for, I honestly don't know which one AJ has possibly been playing, although if I did know, I probably would be under embargo and couldn't say. But honestly, I don't know. It could be a game that's already announced, say like GT7, if Polyphony really want to get into that. But I feel like Polyphony are quite, they're a big, big company and a VR division is only a part of Polyphony and they really haven't touched VR since implementing it. Not really that they needed to, but I'm not sure if that would really be a game that would support it. Maybe Legendary Tales, they don't want to announce it yet, but maybe Legendary Tales are working on Behaptic support um, or it could be an upcoming game like metro or wanderer or behemoth i really really don't know but it's an exciting prospect nonetheless now if you want to get into the world of haptics and haptic suits as i said you got two options 
The one that I've been basing this video on essentially is the TAC Suit X40. Upon double checking, this is the suit with 40 feedback points and comes in at $530. In the UK, that would probably be about £450, maybe a bit less. My conversion isn't quite on point there, I don't think, but it's an expensive bit of kit is the main point. But that is the full shebang, the full thing, 40 feedback points, a big vest and if you don't fancy spending that amount of money, you can go for the X16, which as the name suggests, just like the X40 has 40 feedback points, the X16 has 16 feedback points. And this one comes up at about $200 or less. In terms of playtime, they're advertised for 12 hours. There's no sizes here. It's one size fits all. So you just slap that bad boy on and don't have to worry about sizes at all. And in terms of charging, it takes about five hours to charge the X40 because I'm assuming the battery pack is a bit bigger to power those 40 motors compared to the 16 for the X16 um, and two and a half hours for the X16. And they do connect through either an audio jack or Bluetooth. In the box, you will get the tack suit itself, the mesh lining for the tack suit and the Bluetooth dongle. So it connects the same way like the Pulse headsets do for the uh, the PS5 headsets, you just have a dongle that you plug in and then that'll transfer. Do I think this is going to be a massive game changer that everybody adopts? Absolutely not. The barrier to entry is incredibly high with that price. If you've already spent $600 or quid on a PSVR 2 and potentially another 400 on a PS5, maybe if you want to be ultra immersed and you've got that disposable income, you'll go for a tax suit. But to be honest, it's not something that the average consumer will probably be considering. But it is awesome that we're getting support in certain games that are native. And also, of course, if you just want the haptic response from audio to rumble, like GT7, I think would work great with it. You'd probably be incredibly immersed to pick one up. And that would probably be the icing on the cake to a sim rig as well, would be something like this, which is just awesome to think about. But let me know what you think of this announcement. Are there any games that you think work really well with haptic support? I would say Madison would be one of them. That would be absolutely terrifying. Or Rusty 8 in certain places. Thank you for watching once again. Please do feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you to our patrons, Luke Bentley, Phil Irving, Hazit Mirza, Ace Gamer, and Hippie Pickle. And thank you to our YouTube member, Jin007, a license to chill, also known as James Bales. And all of you guys frequently comment on these videos, which is just incredible. Thank you all. If you want to join the Patreon or YouTube membership, the links are in the description below, along with the Discord. So thank you for watching once again. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in the next one.